Now, some challenges for you. Jot these down. I'm going to go through them very quickly now as we rush to a conclusion here in about 13 minutes. Here they are. You're going to have to write fast now. Here's number one. Review your performance, whether it's communication or whether it's activity or whether it's a CEO or whether it's on the job. Here's what my father said, a seminar in a sentence. I wish he was here to give it, but since he's not here, in his honor, I will give his seminar in a sentence. Here it is. Always do more than you get paid for to make an investment in your future. Now, some unions would argue with us on this, but that's my papa's seminar in a sentence. Always do more than you get paid for to make an investment in your future. My father was so unique. Papa said, if it's raining, you can't fix the roof. If it isn't raining, it doesn't need to be fixed. <laughs> he, was too, he was a grand old man. Wow, this guy. So review your performance, your language with your children. Just go over that and say, have I been too harsh and too strong, and too stubborn? Should I learn to be easier, mix more compassion with the tough stuff I have to deal with? Yes. You know, prayer will help sometimes. If nothing else, you know, dear God, help me. Say the right thing, not to ruin it all by poor communication. Here's the next on my list. Face your fears. You know, I don't know what challenges you might have in going over the stuff we've been going over in terms of amending your philosophy or going back and, you know, redoing some stuff that you might have messed up. But face all your fears. That's how you conquer them. Don't dismiss them. Just face them. Say, here's what I'm afraid of. I wonder what I could do to change that. Here's the next one. Exercise your willpower to change direction. You don't have to keep doing what you've done the last six years if it's not yielding you the benefits you want. In the seminar I do for Jerry, my mentor helped me to review the last six years so I wouldn't repeat those errors the next six. See, if you're a goose, you have no choice to do the next six like you did the last six. But if you're not a goose, here's what you can do. Pick a new destination and start going that way. You say, well, I've done this for the last two years. I'll probably have to do it another two. And the answer is no, not in a million years. Now, you can change one little degree at a time, or if you want to, you can revolutionize the whole thing. Who says you couldn't revolutionize the whole thing in a week's time and start a brand new direction that will most assuredly help you arrive in a brand new place a year from now, three years from now? No, no telling five years from now where you could arrive. Use your willpower to start the process. Just willpower to change a little or change a lot. Anybody can change. You don't have to repeat last year. Clean up the errors. Invest it now in the next year. Watch it make the difference. Here's the next one that's important. Parents have to do it. We ask our kids to do it, but we've got to do it. Admit your mistakes. Sometimes you have to admit them to others. Here's some of the best words in the English language. I'm sorry. The reason why that those are good words is because it could start a whole new relationship. It could start two people going in a whole new direction. I'm sorry. Simple, easy. Not easy, but if you get this done, the turnaround can be dramatic. The early years can be big in payoff. And here's the big one. Admit your mistakes to yourself. You don't have to babble about them to everybody in the neighborhood. But it doesn't hurt to sit down and have a conversation with yourself and say, there's no use kidding myself. Here's where I really am. I've got pennies in my pocket and I've got nothing in the bank. That's what I said after the Girl Scout left my door. I had a conversation with myself. And I said, I don't want this to happen anymore. Next, refine your goals. I don't know what ambitions you've had up until now, but this weekend would be a good time to start the process. We're going to talk about our goals workshop before our session is over this weekend. Maybe that will help stimulate you to set some higher goals, reach for some higher purpose, go for something beyond what you thought you could do. By the time this weekend's over, you might double, triple, quadruple the amount of goals, purpose, all the things you think you can accomplish. 
You could multiply that by 10 by the time we finish here on Sunday. Here's the next one, believe in yourself. Yes, you've you got to believe in God and you've got to believe in the community and you've got to believe in the possibilities. You've got to believe in the economy. You've got to believe that tomorrow can be better than today. But here's the big one, believe in yourself. There isn't a skill you can't learn. There isn't a discipline you can't try. There isn't a class you couldn't take. There isn't a book you couldn't read. If it's written in some other language, you just get it translated and read it. Here's the next one. Ask for wisdom. This is communication of the highest source. Ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom that creates answers. Ask for the wisdom that creates faith to believe things are possible. In King Solomon's day, there was the dilemma of two mothers who claimed the same baby. And the question was, whose baby is this? This mother says, it's mine. The other mother says, no, it's mine. Solomon said, bring me the baby. They brought him the baby, and he raised the sword. He said, I'm going to cut this baby in half and give one half to this mother and one half to this mother. And as he raised his sword, sobbingly, the real mother said, no, no, no. Don't cut the baby in half. Give it to her, who was not the real mother. Solomon says, now I know who's the real mother. See, that is so wise. And the moment was such drama. But Solomon, the wisest of the wise, knew what to do to settle the deal. Ask for wisdom to deal with the challenges of today and tomorrow, to deal with the challenges your family brings you. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Here's the next one. Conserve your time. I must learn to do this. How much time have I got left? Not an unlimited supply. How many of these weekends can I do? Not a thousand. Just a few, maybe a handful. Sometimes we get faked out. Bill Bailey says the average person says, I got 20 more years. No, Bill says you got 20 more times. If you go fishing once a year, you've only got 20 more times to go fishing. Not 20 years. That fakes you out. I got 20 years. No, 20 times. See, that brings it right down to the real stuff. 20 times. How many more seminars like this? Not a thousand, a few, just a few. So would I mumble and stumble? Would I give you less than my best when I've only got a few more to give? And the answer is no, of course not. If you're a person of some dignity and quality, you wouldn't let that happen. Next, invest your profits. We're going to talk now about this before the weekend is over on financial independence. And I'm going to give you some excellent advice. Here was one of the philosophies Mr. Shof gave me, along with Mary Kay. Here's what he said. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. Mary Kay and I went for that. Wow. Could we start earning profits while we're making a living? The answer is yes. I went berserk. Here's one now. Protect your family. These are troublesome times. Not that they haven't been troublesome times for 6,000 years. At school, troublesome times. I know a wonderful mother and a wonderful father who had two boys. In school, they went two different directions. And one became a model citizen and the other one went to jail. Protect your family as best you can from the hidden dangers the lurking evil one. Here's the next one, live with intensity. You might as well turn it up or notch or two after this weekend. Why not? Invest more of you in whatever you do. Be a little stronger, be a little wiser. Step up your vitality, contribution. Put everything you've got into everything you do and then ask for more vitality and more strength and more vigor, more heart, more soul. Next, find your place. This one now is so important. If you just work on a job, find the best place where you can serve well. And sure enough, they'll ask you to occupy a better place. 
And if you keep doing the job well, the guy says, well, if I had a better job, I'd really pour it on. But I got this lousy job, so I just goof off. See, that's the philosophy of disaster. So you've got a lousy job. Do the very best you can. That's your best way out. It's not to do less than you could, but to do the best you can. With that philosophy, your life can take great leaps forward. Here's a Bible phrase that says, if you work on your gifts, they will make room for you. They'll make a place for you. Here's the next one. Demand integrity from yourself. You can't demand integrity from someone else. Integrity is like loyalty. You can't demand it of someone else. You can only demand it of yourself. Be the best example of loyalty, and you'll get some loyal followers. Be the best example of integrity, and you'll have people surround you that have integrity. Lead the way. Next, welcome the disciplines. Can't give you much better advice than that because disciplines create the reality. Disciplines build bridges, build cities. Disciplines, a well-disciplined activity creates abundance, creates uniqueness, productivity. Next, fight for what's right. It's a fight we're in. The, tori the storyteller says, and there was great war in heaven. Wow, you mean way back there? Yes. One third of the angels conspired. I asked Bill Bailey, how long do you suppose it took a third of these angels to get together? Did they conduct meetings? I don't know. Bailey says the storyteller doesn't say. I said, then we're supposed to use our imagination. I don't know. It does say, finally, the great war occurred. And the two-thirds prevailed and the one-third lost. One of the writers of later scripture, here's what he said, I fought a good fight. See, that's extraordinary to be able to say. I fought for my kids and I fought for what was right. And I fought for my good health. And I fought to protect my company. And I fought for a good career that would bless my family. I fought a good fight. It's good to fight. The encroachment. Opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. And if you want something valuable, you got to fight for it. Then this writer also said, not only have I fought a good fight, and I'll finish with this, and I got a much longer list, but maybe I can cover these at another time. He said, I fought a good fight, and I kept the faith. See, that's the deal. Keep faith with your family. Fight like crazy and keep faith. Fight the enemy and keep faith. Fight illness and keep faith. Fight the evil and keep faith. I can't give you much better advice. So thank you very much for your attention.